guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop, Rise of the Amazon, where players will basically be taking the form of Amazons in the old world. They'll be gathering the favor of the gods, fighting against monsters like Cerebus and the Sphinx and the Minotaur and others, while attempting to control and dominate the old world and keeping the anger of the gods to a minimum. And you'll be playing as one of those characters in three rounds, trying to acquire victory points, and the person who has the most is the winner. The game is made by Alcon Creative. They make games like Ironclad and Alexander's Campaign, which I've also enjoyed. And this one here, well, it is a fantasy themed vibrant game which I'll show you down below all the components and we'll come up and talk about my review of the game whether you want to pick this game up or not currently on Kickstarter Rise of the Amazon all right let's go ahead and take a look down below so here we have the game Rise of the Amazons and everything included along with of course these great little miniatures for the characters you'll be utilizing these cards here are the monsters with their different locations or tokens that are uh, associated with these on the board here it's also the player tokens of the Amazons you can choose from that says two to four players but I have just three players here to show you there is a deck here which are basically these end of game victory condition cards as well as actions you can take throughout the game over here are the common amazons that you'll be gathering and they'll be placed over here on the board as well as up here are the different bonuses that they'll get for the different positions and you'll use these to demonstrate what they are so if this is a one two and a one which makes it a three so it's a one three this is a three and a two but three plus two is five so it is a five two and you'll be utilizing these to fight monsters on the board here each character is going to have certain starting locations and you'll place them on the board and this one here has a choice between certain numbers where this one here is going to start in the middle i went ahead and put this aside just to show you two players for the game these little tokens here have spaces on the board you basically shuffle these tokens up and randomly place them on the board giving it a nice varied feel so that all the different colors are in different locations these are your player boards which you'll be trying to gather the victory point areas and placing them on your board based on their color as well as your action location uh pieces here. So each of the characters that you choose are going to have a space and you're going to usually start at 10 here. And that is going to facilitate you getting to play certain things throughout the rounds. There are three rounds throughout the game and a plethora of things to do. Each character is going to get a starting character like Hippolata is going to start. And that's the, that's with her as well as an Amazon that you'll be getting to choose. I think it's called an ancillary Amazon, but they'll basically be passed along round to round. This character over here is Parathela, which is a warrior. So she'll start over here. And then, of course, we're going to have Hippolata and uh, the guy that they're following which is Celebi and you'll go ahead and have these as well and you just set them off to the side you'll be utilizing these in order to fight the monsters throughout the game and of course you also take these tokens here and tokens are going to go throughout the board so one of them will be on a victory point area another is going to be based uh, on your supply and in this case you'll check to see okay this guy gets two supply uh, this little one here will go right there, which will indicate whether you've used your special ability for that specific character, if you do use it. And then if you use your second one, you remove it from the board and you won't get it back until the next round. And this here, you'll be moving along when you use actions throughout the game. And of course, the extra ones here are going to be used for whenever you get torches and whatnot to give you special abilities. And if you ever place flags down in certain locations that will also get you victory points whenever players land on them. So you'll have extra tokens to utilize throughout the game. Like I said before, the gameplay is in three rounds, and on your turn, you'll be able to choose any of these actions here, as well as some unique actions based on the cards provided with these warriors here. You might be attacking, you might be moving, you might be gathering some victory conditions or endgame bonuses, as well as unique bonuses for each of the players. Gathering supply, and remember, if you're ever at zero supply at the end of the game, you are not eligible for victory. Uh, then you're going to have flags, boats, ports that let you move around. You can have the armory and stuff like that. Things that will let you get your abilities back. And quite a few different abilities, as well as this board down here. And this is going to represent the number of victory points you lose if you don't cover these spaces up. And you're going to be defeating these spaces, placing them on here, and then reducing the amount of victory points that you would normally lose, or gaining the victory points that you would instead lose. So you're going to want to do that, and that's why fighting, which I'll explain in a second here. Other thing you want to note too is you're going to have these little symbols here, which are these cards, and so this character here would get two of these cards, and you can gather these cards from certain objectives or certain uh, requirements, like spending victory points, or, or not victory points, uh, action points to draw two and choose one of them. They're going to have unique bonuses on them, so in this case here, you'll have three options. So for instance, you can choose to get a red and a blue that you'll use to fight, but it will cost a single point uh, in order to move this around, as well as it's a battle. Same thing with this one here. And at the end of the game, you'll get plus one to the supply at the end of the game, which can get you bonus points. So saving these cards into the, the game could be useful if you don't want to simply just use them. 
So let's go ahead and talk about how you fight. It's pretty simple. On your turn, you'll take an action. So for instance, I can go ahead and use this character to move, in which case I would spend one point because that's how much it costs to move. The next player would do the same thing. It would be back to your turn and you could choose to fight. When you fight, you have to select a specific color on a location. Then you're going to add that location's bonus to that specific creature. So in this case, it's a 2-2 two -two, and this is a 3-1. So three plus two is five, two plus one is three. So you need to fight a 5-3. You will do that by spending one action which is part, uh, and one action point, which is part of the action. And then you get to choose one of these two here. And then you're also, if you want, or if you need to, you can select one of these. And there's a cost here associated as well. So for instance, if I wanted to, I could spend two more points to recruit this Amazon here, thusly giving me the bonus of five and two to my Amazon, putting this at a seven, five. And as a 7-5, I simply will beat that specific monster. When you beat them, you'll gain victory points. Moving along this track here, you'll remove these pieces. If you remove all of them that are on the area, you can also place banners down and a bunch of other stuff. And the game will basically continue like that until you run out of actions. And when you do, you'll refresh the round. Things like these god abilities will come out, or sorry, these god abilities here will come out throughout the game, which case it'll tell you you don't need to be certain places. Certain places are locked down. You can't go to ports. You can't, you get less actions, etc., etc., which changes the rounds from round to round, making it a unique and interesting play experience each time you play the game. Of course, there's a certain limited amount, which we'll talk about during the review as to what I'd like to see in the game. But in the idea of um, how it works, basically when you defeat a certain area, you'll take that and place it on one of the colored areas. And as you can see, they're all different. And that is a good way of reducing the amount of lost victory points at the end of the game. So obviously this character wants to defeat green enemies, this character wants to defeat blue, and this character wants to defeat red. And you're gonna move along this track as you defeat enemies and as you accomplish certain tasks. You're also gonna have this Amazon amazon Mackey, which basically says that at any certain point you can go ahead and use this ability, which you'll find on certain cards. You'll spend the cost, and if you do, you can place this down based on how well your fighting strength is, and you'll gain victory points. And if you don't have at least one on here at the end of the game, you're going to lose victory points, but when you place it on, you'll lose a supply. And you're always going to lose supply at the end of a round. So during the end of a round, certain things will happen, things will refresh, and you'll lose supply, which in turn will make you lose victory points at the end of the game. And remember, you never want to be here. And hopefully at the end of the game, you're going to gain three victory points if you use enough supply, if you gain enough supply. And that's pretty much it. At the end of all three rounds, hopefully you'll have taken off a lot of these pieces here. You've secured a lot of this area here. You'll have placed a lot of your flags down. You'll have gained these cards, which in turn will give you more victory points. And you have defeated the monsters. And the monsters can range in victory points, whether it be two, three, or even four points, pushing you along this track. You can go throughout the game trying to get as many points as you possibly can, and ignoring this board, pushing yourself further. But if you do ignore the victory conditions and requirements throughout the game, it will cost you in the end. But nevertheless, that's the basic idea of how to play the game. I didn't explain everything, but if you want to learn more, it's on the Kickstarter in the description below. Rise of the Amazons. Let's talk about what I think about the game and whether you should pick it up. So Alcon Creative makes a lot of cool, unique board games, and I believe they're from Greece, which is also pretty cool, something unique. They have their different take and perspective on how to play the games. And because of that, there is obviously translation things that I had to go about. Like, for instance, at the end of a round, if you are the first person to gain points, you're going to get one less action. And if you're the last person to gain points, you will gain an action. So your objective is to try and secure points later as opposed to earlier. Now, I don't know if that means based on the translation that it's based on when you gain the victory points or at the end of the round, whoever has the most will lose an action and whoever has the least amount of victory points will gain an action point or if it's simply when you gain them as what matters. So like I said, there's just certain little things as far as translation goes that just need to be cleaned up in the game. But overall, it was very easy to understand how to play this game. A couple of unique little caveats I wanted to mention is when you recruit somebody in the top area of the board, there are more Amazons that will come out and replace them. And when you run out, you will shuffle the deck up. There are different types of monsters in each area. Each have their own unique victory points and their own stats. And you're also going to trade or switch along your secondary Amazons, so not your main leader, but your other ones, moving them around with other players in a clockwise position each and every single round. That means that you're not always going to have your starting Amazon. And in a two-player game, you're just going to go back and forth with them. Whereas in a four-player game, you'll be going around in a circle. Also, each unique game board is going to have unique special actions. This guy gets to have one extra battle for free and also an attack in an adjacent area as a battle action as opposed to the area you're on. And you'll be able to use both of these, and the only way you'll get to refresh them is when you go to a specific space in the board where you can spend actions. This is an action management game. You want to save as much action points as you can and gain as many victory points as you possibly can going throughout. And if you run out of 
actions that you can take, then everybody else will just keep going and you're going to have to pass. The game plays rather quickly, actually. It probably takes about 35 minutes to 45 minutes to play a game after you understand the rules, because there's certain things you can do, but there's always a best move for you in general. And you'll start to learn as you play the game what your best move is and how you're best going to be able to accomplish that move. However, there's also unique and interesting different aspects of the game. Do you want to attack and fill your board? If you do that, that's great, but maybe it's at the cost of less victory points. Do you want to supply yourself with high-valued points to secure yourself points on the Amazon Nearchy, the, the little market area where you're going to be placing those pieces down? Do you want to keep your supply high, or are you willing to risk it and use your actions to bolster yourself until the end of the game, in which case you have to not be at the end there, or you will lose? The god cards that come out, I think, are pretty cool as well, but there's four of them. I'd like to actually see more, which changes the game up. This is a good taste to see how it plays, and I imagine they'll probably have a couple more as well. But one might be there's certain areas on the board that are inactive, you can't be on there, and if you already started there, you have to leave. And if you're on an Oracle or Barracks at the end of the round, minus four victory points. Now this one says be at the Oracle or Barracks at the end of the round, and if you are, minus four. I'd actually like to see, I'd like to see the language change to if you are on a Barracks or a Oracle space, at the end of the round, you will lose four points. So there's just like little things like that. I know I'm nitpicking, but it's one of those things that if you don't understand the language, it changes certain things. It's kind of like not telling you you need to reshuffle certain things. And if you don't tell the player that, they're not going to know. Uh, each player is unique and it is different as to how they function. And you're going to be basically playing off of that character. And if you don't utilize their special tactics, you will be at a disadvantage. So you need to make sure you utilize them and as best as you possibly can, because their actions are very viable and very useful. And if you can, refresh them are very good. These, to these cards here, uh, they are very beneficial as well. At the end of the game, these can make the difference because this game is very, very, very close in scoring. You're not very likely to score above and beyond one of your opponents. So each and every victory point makes a difference. And in some of these cases, some of these cards will actually say that at the end of the game, if you are tied, you will simply win as opposed to being tied. So some of these cards will help in that way. Others will say plus one victory point. And then others, which is also, I guess, a weird thing, say minus a point. And does this mean I can choose to not minus a point? Or if I have it in my hand at the end of the game, it's minus a point. I don't know. It's not clear enough. So those are my kind of little things. The artwork in the game is great. I love the vibrancy. I've loved the vibrancy for all of their games. And this one does a great job of it as well. The characters are unique. There's a lot of versatility. The games feel different when you play them. It feels different based on the number of players. And it works two, three, and four players. No problem. Each and every player count pretty much plays very similarly with the extent of things are a lot dicier and harder to get as more players come because it's kind of area control, combat based, and there's only certain different victory points you can gather. Yes, it is a competitive game. Yes, there is a bit of nuance as to how you want to be aggressive and how you want to not be aggressive and at what point is the best and how you want to gather those fire torches to give yourself additional endgame victory points or simply to use the bonuses on them and how you choose to do that is going to make a difference throughout the game. Overall, Rise of the Amazon is a fun game, it's something I would definitely suggest you checking out. It's one of those games that I think people who like complexity, they like aggressive combat, they like area control, and they want something thing with in a small container with a lot of bite for your buck definitely check out this game if you don't like aggressive style games if you're not into games that are going to require you to have to think about all the different possible actions and different consequences for not choosing certain things throughout the game this one might not be for you but overall i enjoyed this game i enjoy pretty much all the games i've tried of them so far and i think it's something you should definitely check out down below currently on kickstarter rise of the amazon by alkyne creative all right guys outro time thanks for watching the unfiltered gamer board Board game review. If you like this video, check out some other videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that little notification bell button there up in the subscribe area. We really, really appreciate it and help us keep making more content. And I hope you guys are doing very, very well right now. Also, I have a question because I did talk about the miniatures a lot. These are great, really well detailed, very, very nice quality, but they're busts. Do you guys? Comment for question. Comment down below and let me know what you think. I'm curious to know. I haven't really made up my mind on this, but do you like busts as characters for certain games, or would you prefer the entire miniature? What do you think? These guys, like I said before, are really, really, really nice, really, really cool. And I think in this game, I probably prefer the busts over miniatures. But what do you think as far as this goes? Hopefully I'll be able to take a picture and show you guys close up. Uh, but yeah, anyway, check out the game down below if it's something that you're interested in. All right, guys, it's long, it's hot lately, it's crazy. 
I will hopefully see you guys in the next video if you're still watching. I appreciate you guys watching to the very end here. And I hope to see you guys on my live stream Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where we give away a whole bunch of stuff. All right, see you next time.